Hi, and thanks for listening to another edition of Dear People of Earth. Uh, today I'm talking with Fernando. He's the gentleman that, uh, as you know, we released the orb photo uh, that was taken in the Ecuadorian rainforest. And uh, Fernando is the gentleman that took that picture. Um, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about uh, the specifics behind uh, where he uh, was, what he was doing, um, and just get a little bit more into the consciousness of the whole thing. and. Um, just some interesting uh, takes from Fernando, I think, that uh, are very important. Um, so if you have been following along recently, uh, George Knapp uh, had made mention. Uh, oh, sorry, I was, my dog was looking at me. Um, we, George Knapp had made mention of uh, when you're looking at this phenomenon, whether it's orb, whether it's Tic Tac, whatever the, whatever the technology is, it's usually attached to some type of consciousness. Um, and there have been some really wild um, things that have been put out there um, that you would think are, are you know, you, you talk about the metaphysical and you talk about the um, supernatural and things of that nature. And, and the first thing is, is, you know, people that don't follow any of this just kind of tune right out. So that's not part of it. But um, there's obviously some type of something going around um, or something going on with that. And we've been touching on that. Uh, in other recent podcasts, both with Kevin Day, with Michael uh, last week, um, you can see that there's something going on. So anyway, I'd like to introduce you to Fernando. Um, and Fernando, I'm just going to let you take over here a little bit. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, where you're from. Uh, I know that you're also uh, a, a, an underwater photographer and you, you do some work in your area. So I'd like you to, you know, just, just let everybody know a little bit about who you are and uh, what you're all about. So. Take it away. Okay, good night, Steve. Very nice to meet you and talk to you. Yes, um, yes, I'm Fernando Cornejo. I'm from Ecuador. I was born in Ecuador. And I live, I'm currently living in Chile. I'm a photographer and, a, and a, I work um, mainly in uh, nature photography and underwater photography. That's my specialty. So I'm always um, hanging around with my camera and traveling a lot. That's mainly um, my, my activity. And um, so <clears throat> this um, situation of being, uh, being able to make a picture of an orb was uh, quite interesting and very important for me too. So um, yeah, um, a bit of a bit about myself. Um, I don't know, just a normal guy <laughs> living life. I'm I'm yeah. been working with tourism a lot. I'm as a scuba diver and as a dive instructor. I've been working with tourism and going around the world, and. Um, well, what what I I think, Steve, you can um, ask me some questions, and so we can get into the conversation about this day when 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 um, I was able to to do this picture, no, and to live this yes, this so experience previous, because it's it's so it's previous, more than a picture; it was an experience, you know, experience. The, for me. Yeah, yeah. So previous to this, you we had talked before. Um, with our friend, our mutual friend Juan, and we talked about you uh, do a lot of work or talk between uh, indigenous peoples um, and people within the government, um, and you're able to kind of talk to all of these different people. And previous to this, um, you were doing something along those lines. Is that correct? It's not that I do the talks. It's it's what what uh, mainly what I talked with Juan. Uh, is that um, my personality? It's it's not about my job. It's because being a photographer gets mm, me to meet people. Uh, as a photographer, I've been I've been um, been able to to talk to different <clears throat> cultures, different types of people. And and um, this has allowed me to to be around 
um, how can I say, many type of people. Like I have no problem to talk with the uh, with the uh, with the president of the Ecuador, and I have no problem to talk with anybody, human beings, and I have no problem like to um, no issues, you know. So, but it's not that I've been working between government and uh, and and indigenous people. It's just the thing about indigenous people in my country is very important. And um, <clears throat> I've been I've been studying the indigenous cosmovision, and I've been um, living and experiencing different type of uh, indigenous cosmovision in my life. So um, I have very um, strong. Um, I have a very nice. strong connection with with indigenous people and not only from ecuador but from the world you know this ancestral way of living and um right when i when i when, when uh, i don't know if you want me to stick to start telling you about the day that i saw the 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 orb because uh, i was going to a community i was heading my way to a community that is called Sequoia Remolino. And this community is from a very small group of indigenous people. The Sequoias are um, an etnia or a nationality of indigenous Ecuadorian people that is a very small amount of people left. And um, a specific Remolino community is about 200 people. Uh, and I was in my way to stay with them and live with them and learn from their cosmovision. The, um, so I was heading to meet um, the chief of the of the of the community who has made a, a, an invitation or who was uh, receiving me in his house for I was going to spend with him a couple of days. So I, I, I spent there like um, 10 days, but I was heading there. I, wa I wasn't with them yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm. did you have an issue where you had to stop in that specific area? I know we talked about it, but I wanted you to talk about it. Okay, so specifically going into the details of that day, I was driving yes. my car. I had to leave a hometown, Quito, very early in the morning to pass the, um, the mountains, to pass the Cordillera de los Andes. Um, so once I passed the Andes Highland, uh, I was getting into the jungle, Ecuadorian jungle. And I was very tired. Suddenly, I was very, very tired. I was driving my car alone, and I was getting very sleepy or very tired. And I stopped in a place where you can stop the cars and have a view. It's like a, um, an area where you can have the view, a view side. And... Um, I fall asleep, like one, two, three, boom, out. I was sleeping, very tired. And uh, I was so tired that I left the um, lights on the car. But I turned off the engine, and I think I was with the radio too. So I slept there for an hour at least. And when I woke up, because there was more people in the in this place, I tried to turn on the car, but battery was off, so no battery. And this was a new car, so uh, <laughs> new battery, new car. But mm. in maybe in an hour it was with lights on, off. So I I tried to fix it. Uh, some people helped me. We put some cables, run my car, and keep going. So I lost like one hour and a half of time or two hours, one hour and 45 minutes in between. I, let, I, I was sleeping and also after 
when I was fixing the car. And there was this person waiting for me in the town and, and, and I had six hours more to drive. So I started going, but suddenly I stopped in this beautiful view. Mm, for me, the ocean is very important. But when I got to this point, it was like the jungle looked like the ocean. It was amazing view after the hills. So I was still on a highland, highland, not on the highest part of the mountains, but I was higher than the jungle. And um, mm -hmm. I have this feeling, very, very strange feeling and the sensations also in between like tired and uh, and also i had i had to go i had the, the i have to leave to find these guys so i have uh, i wanted to go but i decided to stop in this place where, where which one i have in the map that i saw that i sell, sended you in the, in the map that yes. i sent you that's the stop i did and I, I do the stop there, and as a photographer, I started doing these photos of the view. It was just making the photos of the view, of the landscape, which was amazing. And when I did the photo, and I actually I had my camera, I did a couple of shots with my camera, but I had my phone, and I was taking, uh, like... Mm, vertical photos for 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 the Instagram and stuff. So I I put a, I make a, a photo, and that's when I see this strange thing in the photo. And at the beginning I was confused with these balls that they put on the cables. Here in Ecuador in the jungle, mm -hmm. uh, the cables have some balls. I think it's for helicopters not to crash into the into the cables. So I thought uh, right. that was it. And, um, well, um, I did a couple of photos more in that moment. And uh, I noticed that this, this ball, this orb, wasn't there anymore. And the strange thing is that the photo I did um, is really, really clear. And it has focus on the exact point where the orb is because the second photo and the third photo I did um, the focus is a little bit behind it's like closer to me so I checked the camera too and uh, and you you cannot see anything on the camera or um, I wasn't able to see the orb with my eyes um, right I just so have one of the, the things have, that we did was I have like I have like a, a feeling but I have like it's strange how my brain um I don't know it, it was like feeling tired extremely tired so it was this this sensation and when I I did the picture with the phone I noticed exactly uh, um it was it was really clear because it has focus on the proper uh, focal distance. It has the proper right. focus in in, in, in in that distance because it's uh, it's <clears throat> I would say it's uh, more than eight hundred meters away. More 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 uh, maybe um, maybe one thousand five hundred meters away from me. You know, so it's not when really you, when you saw close. that in the picture. Yes. When you saw that in the picture, what was kind of the first thing that you thought of? I know you you said you were thinking, well, maybe it was one of those things over the the you know. I know what you're talking about with the they have wires and they put the balls on them so that they you know you don't bang into them a helicopter or whatever it's not going to smack into them. But what was your first thought after that? Like, what was it like? what did I just see or what did I just catch or what was this? Like, what were you thinking, you know, because you're a, you're an experienced photographer. So you, you do this for a living, right? It's not, it's not like you're just throwing pictures up and you don't know what you're doing. 
you actually do this for a living. This is something that you do. Now, obviously, you caught something on the on the on the shot that wasn't there previously for a second. You never even saw the thing um, in in going through the air, moving left, right, up, or down. So you caught this thing in a split second, which is something we think maybe you weren't supposed to catch. Like you weren't supposed to get that, and it just happens that bing, you got it. You know what were you thinking at that time? At that point. At the beginning, I was confused, but um, I have this feeling, or I was at the beginning confused, and then I had like I had this. Um, I felt certain, certeza. I I feel that it was really true that it was an ovni. Uh, I I knew that this was something um, different. I knew this was. Um, because uh, you know, just by looking in the picture, you can notice there's a little house in the left where you can see a little bit the size of this thing, and uh, I knew that, that it was um, of me, not from the not from the earth, not. Um, I knew it was different, so. Immediately, I I sent this picture to some friends, and uh, this is how a few days or a couple of days, not just uh, two days after, I met Juan, and start talking with Juan, and then I talked with you maybe a couple of weeks later or um, one month later. Um, I was traveling around, and I I I talked. To many people, but I had very important talks with the local community because remember I was taking this trip to the jungle to meet the indigenous people and to talk with them. So I showed this picture to them and I was talking with them to see what have they seen or how, what have they experienced. So they were telling me that indigenous people have a lot of um, stories or make uh, metaphors and make stories. So there was a lot of um, uh, information exchange with he, with me and them, and and they were telling me that they've um, heard stuff, like not seen, but heard uh, stuff. And, um, but they, they have never seen something like that before and um this is how this is when i started um um more than more than um investigating talking with the people around and this is how i get to juan and this guy how i get to you and now i am sure and i know that this uh, um, picture this this regi the 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 registro the the picture I did is very clear and it's very important because we we can see um, something that haven't hasn't seen something that ha it's not has has not been recorded before in in that clear you know and and that's for me it's amazing because I've seen couple of of um uh, i've seen activity i've i've seen activity and i am a very sensitive person i am like um very sensitive person and i've seen this stuff but i've never recorded and now that i've recorded now this is for me certain is real because i le lived it and it, the experience Mm, it's it's true, you know. It's it's amazing what what I saw, what I was able to record, and now we have this right. proof that this happened, you know, and that this is happening constantly. Well, yeah. Now, it why, is truly, why, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, let me finish. Um, so it is truly uh, uh, like a, a worldwide phenomenon. It is something that is happening all over the planet. 
Um, and you know, when I, when Juan showed that to me, um, and I, and I got the low resolution version of it first, I had to sit and stop and I, I, I had to live with the picture for a little while, right? Because I wasn't a hundred percent certain what I was looking at. Um, and the more and more I looked at it and the more and more I thought about it and the more and more I thought about the things that, um, as you know, I've had some contact with some other people, um, especially with the reverse engineering and, and things of that nature and what they explained to me um, about how these particular orbs operate. Um, it specifically showed me that that's exactly what was occurring. So the more and more I looked at it, the more and more I became convinced um, that what we were looking at was something vastly different than anything else that had ever been caught on film before. Um, and I say film, I'm kind of old with that, but, um, you know, I guess, you know, it's a digital picture now, but, um, yeah, yeah. when I, you know, when I saw that, I said to myself, this guy caught something that has never been caught doing this specifically before, because you could see, um, and, and then the person that I had that actually did the forensic work on the photograph, um, film or uh, was actually Mark. able to look at that picture. Yes, Mark was actually able to look at this picture and, and tell the above and the below and the chromasticity that was between the two of those. And it was it was a moment that was kind of like, OK, so this guy caught something that's never been caught before. Yes, they've, there's been other videos and things where it looks like they're catching things that are on a far distance. They're moving. They're going through the air. You know, whenever I see something that's going just in a straight trajectory, just in a straight line, I tend to think that's not it, that's not exactly what we're looking for when we're trying to find and we're trying to suss out these individual orbs. Um, I think it's when they're doing specific things, going like this, 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 and this, as opposed to just going in a straight line. And what you caught was literally a fraction of a second in time. Like it was, it was that one in 10 million shot. It was not even like a, it wasn't like you were shooting a video or something and caught it. It was literally like, it's there, it's gone. And you caught it at that exact moment. And that was what kind of blew my mind because I've, I've heard theories from it's a butterfly. Okay. Well, here you are. You're now talking to the person that, that caught this image and there were no butterflies in the area. Is that correct? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. actually, so I, now, I mean, I thought it could be a butterfly. I thought it could be many things, but it's what Mark says, and it's in the forensic uh, testimony, is that the, the focal length, the, the distance, the, the where the focus is so mm, right yeah it could be a balloon from a kid that throw from a town but actually there were no towns around this is it's just the jungle you know and then mm, it was not a balloon it was it was big and it disappeared it's, boom yeah. It, yeah it never and that's it and never that's move from a trajectory from a point A from to a point B. It just it's gone. Gone. Boom. It's gone. Gone. It was it was there. Here I am. And now poof. It's gone. It's not it didn't move. Yeah, it didn't yeah. go from point A to point B. Yes, yeah, no because up, no we down, have, just gone. And no butterflies, no birds. Yeah, it could it, it could be a bird, but that's why the the picture went to a forensic a study you know and 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 it is clear it's for me it's really clear for me it is a uh, experience that i lived and for me it's amazing to being able to catch uh this on the film on record on the on the camera um it was amazing and i knew this would happen to me i knew this from before that this was going to happen to me. And I have this feeling, Steve, that it's going to keep happening. Maybe I have to be very clever and very alert and, and like mm, to, to, to see if I find something else, you know. And I live in a place where I, I, as a photographer, I move desert, jungle, underwater. And underwater, I've left, I felt some very crazy things but 
I have not on record. This is on record. So this is an experience that this has been recorded. And and it's um, it was a very uh, nice experience to live, you know, an experience, uh, amazing experience. <clears throat> have you felt that, um, I know that we talked about this a little bit before and, and uh, we talked about consciousness, we talked about, um, you know, the specifics within uh, a technological envelope, like there is a technology that is, that is part of this. Um, sorry, my cat's hopping in here with us. Um, what we have discussed previously that there is a um, a technological component that goes along with the experience itself, and um, you know uh, some people that have experiences um, do not have pleasant experiences. Um, would you catalog this as something um, that you felt was uh, a positive, or is this something that has maybe gotten you into a situation where you feel? Uh, definitely. I, I definitely, you know, your own words, let me know how you felt and how you continue to feel about this. Do you feel positively? I feel that as a photographer, it is um, a very good, like, uh, situation. Uh, um, in photography, um, you capture instants, moments, and uh, there's a magic when you capture this, like a kid that laughs uh, just when the bee is being eaten by a bird. It's just this fraction of second that when you catch it, wow, boom, it's like you feel and it, it's amazing. So just to do the picture, I felt amazing. Now, um in in the moment of my life i've been i've been searching for indigenous cosmovision and i've been and i changed the, my lifestyle um many years ago i've been traveling around i've been doing photography uh, in a different way because i do photography i have a project where we do macro photography in fruits and plants and how the human nature and the mother's earth nature is just the same and we're just part of the earth and and how earth is inside us and how we belong to earth and it's just we are just one ecosystem so i've been exploring a lot so in this exploration and in my in my in my exploration because what I, what I've been exploring is like the art, the photography, the human body, but also the um, our chronological life, our ancestrals. So I I've been trying to communicate with ancestors like grandfathers, but grand grandfathers and great grandfathers and. And, and I've been able to communicate with them. And it has been amazing uh, how the, all these clues in my life has have been getting like in order. And this is why I find so amazing the synchro, the synchro, the, the, the synchrony, the, 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 that, that this happened when I was going to meet these indigenous people, this, this community, I was going to live with them and not going as a tourist, but going to, to live as one of them and to be part of, of, um, of the community for a couple of days, but not just like a tourist, which I've been many, many times in the jungle, but as a tourist in a lodge or in a, in a, in, a, in a hotel. So, um, all these make me feel at the end um, very um, confident on what I am doing and very um, convinced that there is much more than what we've been told. There's much more than what we think we are. So in this constant exploration, 
I I think that this is not like this this picture. It's not um, a coincidence. Right. It's not a coincidence. I I I am sure that this is not just a little coincidence. It's it it, it was meant to be like that. And um, what's going on? What's going to happen? I don't know. It's like mm, many things that happened in my life 20 years ago, 18 years ago. Now I am understanding now 20 years ago and 15 years ago, 20 or 15 years later, I understand. Oh, uh, okay, I get it. So now um, I don't know exactly, but I have the feeling, Steve, that I have to go around and um, keep uh, doing photography in the sky and underwater, you know, and on the earth and do my macro uh, photography because sometimes we are feeling that we want to find this huge um, uh, machines or this big stuff. But I think also there's very, very small and very tiny stuff that we are not paying attention to. So I'm paying attention to all these and, and in my feelings, mm, I don't know if I can tell you if there's um after this moment because it has been like a process of many things happening to me. Many, many things had had happened to me in the last uh, two years or three years and it has been magic. I tell you it has been magic and I feel I feel I think many good things that happened to me. You know? It's like uh, I I think it's a vibration when the when that when 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 you get uh, into the high frequencies, you start vibrating different, and I think that was what maybe the main reason to being able to see this or to record this. It's just because how I am vibrating in this time of my life, you know. Mm, it might have nothing to do. That... It might be just a coincidence. I don't know. But uh, I, I don't know that more people that have experienced stuff like me, we have many things in common. And that's what makes this amazing, you know? And that's what makes me want to keep going. And in all my studies... In the Mayan study, the, the, the Synchronario Maya, I, I have this role that is called the Enlazador de Mundos. So this is the world's, the, the Enlazador de Mundos. To translate this in English, it would be like the world's connections or the world's connector. And that's my, my, my duty uh, that, that I'm that I have to do here. So when I when I start talking with Juan and we start talking about some stuff that, that he has been leaving and all this synchronicity, all this stuff that happened at the same time very fast, then I say this is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. This is meant to be like that. And and. Uh, I don't know, Steve, um, but um, I feel just positive stuff, positive, positive stuff. And um, it has been really amazing. Now I'm exper experiencing some other stuff that I, I, I don't know if, if, it's, if, I, if, if this is the place, the proper place to, to talk about all this stuff. But... It's like this. I believe it is. And we, as human beings, we as human I, beings, our why. brain, it's, 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 it's like um, it, we've lost many of the ca capabilities or capacities of our brain. And uh, now... I have this intuition, uh, intuition 
um, clarividencia or cl like I can I, I can even hear what other people are thinking and this is not all the time it's not nice it's true it's not all the time it's not nice but I can hear stuff I can I have this intuition very very clear and I can I've been doing games with my kids and with the, my her their friends of telepathy and I I have this wow I go like how how can I do this you know and I've discovered that we are all able to do this uh, all human beings but somehow uh, I'm like uh, waking up uh, this in my brain it's it's like it's waking up and now I can play around and it has been absolutely mind blowing what has been happening to me in this in this in this last year. So actually Steve, I don't I think that the 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 the, 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 the picture I did of the of the of the orb it's is one stuff that happened of of more of more things going around it and uh, what i can tell you that is that it's true and what i have this feeling and uh, the certeza or i'm certain that it was an orb now when i read uh, marks um um Forensic, forensic forensic study. I I was like wow, and I've read written a little bit what you what you've posted in in Twitter or X, and um, I'm really I really want to know more. I really want to know more. I really want to. I would like to meet people that lived maybe uh, similar things that I've been living. Uh, and I would really like Steve to, you know, to to um, use this this experience, to use this picture, to to use this picture um, in my favor. Also, you know, it, it, it's just mm -hmm. to give it the importance that that it has, the value, because it is really. Um, specific and and it's really um, um, maybe it's it's unique. This picture is unique for for now. It's unique. So I I I want to learn more. I want to know more. Who's behind this? I want to know more about Arctuni Arctunians and and all of these nations or uh, of well, they are not people, but spirits that are out there in the in the in the universe. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of people, obviously, that I can connect you with, and and we'll continue to move forward with this story and and be able to connect you with um, more people that I feel that you should be connected with. Um, there is, you know, as I said, um, one of the things that, and, and we talk about this first before. Um, we ever had this. This was when we were our first discussion, our first meeting. Um, we talked about um, the consciousness part of it, and I touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, but it seems that people that are experiencers of phenomenon, and it's not necessarily those that see something way far away, but it seems like it's almost like it, it, it touched you specifically for whatever reason. I'm not sure, um, but it sounds and it, and it appears to me that it's it was affecting you previous to you even catching this thing on camera um, as you were going through your search and through through your own life story. Um, but it seems as if possibly now even more so that um, it's kind of awakened things within you that you maybe didn't think that you had or you knew. Um, and I can tell you that from an experiencer point of view, um, though to you, this is all a very new experience. A lot of uh, people that I've spoken with have been going through this, some for decades. Um, some people have been, as children, um, have had experiences and their entire lives 
um, have been taken with this this situation, and and they have found, um, you know, you, you talk about the the psychic ability, or you talk about the, um, you know, being able to see and hear and experience what people are doing. Now, there's certainly people that are intuitive, um, you know, but I think that there's more to it than that. And there's, um, if you if you listen to Tom DeLong, he is. I don't know if you know who Tom is, but. Um, he's with To The Stars Academy. He's also a, a rock star with Blink-182. I mean, he's huge. Um, but he was one of the people that uh, was able to kind of get this story moving years ago again in the right direction. And then, of course, in 2017, we had those videos that dropped with the uh, the Tic Tac and the Orb and, and whatever else. And since all of that has occurred, Tom himself, who I'd love to try and get you in contact with him, um, Tom himself has been talking about uh, the interdimensionality. He's talking about the beings, and, and one of his one of his big things was the inter, the uh, the universe is teeming with life. Right? It's it's everywhere. It's all around us. So there's a there's a part to this that experiencers feel quite deeply, and it's obvious that you feel it quite deeply as well. And you talk about one of the other things, and I'm glad that you brought up Mayans in, in the Maya. Um, is that it seems like throughout those cultures, um, and we're talking thousands of years ago now, and, and really, we haven't even really touched on how much is there because a lot of those uh, jungles, especially in Mexico, are not searched, right? There, there's still so much left there to learn. And, and if you look at some of the things that are left behind, um, and you look at you know the ancient, the ancient astronaut theory, this has been going on for thousands of years, right? And there's a connectedness, and you talked about as well a little bit about your um, your lineage, about talking about your ancestry. And I think that there could be a link between that. I think certain people are more in tune and more in, in, into receiving this um, as opposed to others who may uh, have a constant skeptic's point of view. And I think part of that is the consciousness that we have and we walk around with. Um, it's something that, um, showed itself to you and you were willing and able to listen and, and see it. Um, but what do you think moving forward? Um, and, and as you go on your journey, do you have, um, not necessarily expectations, but do you have a thought as to where this is going for you personally, or do you think this is just something you're going to ride along and, and see where it goes? I don't know, Steve. I I haven't thought about this. I am. <laughs> is uh, my personality also? I I don't plan too much. I have like I don't know what's going to happen. I know that this is important. I know that this is important in my life. I know this is important in my life as a photographer. I know this is important in my life in this constant exploration and seeking stuff. I know that this is gonna make me meet people, important people or not important people, but I'm gonna meet people. And uh, for me, it's just very nice to meet you, you know, and, and you have a lot of information and I, I really like uh, to meet you and I really like to be able to be one more person demonstrating that uh, there's stuff going around and there's a lot of people here that have a lot of instruments and have a lot of technology and they are not telling us the truth and this is something that I don't like and uh, and I like to be part of one person telling the truth and, uh, and so I don't feel um, I think that when you tell the truth uh, I, I'm, I have no fear I have no fear because this is the truth and and I'm w always living like in in this way so but I don't know Steve I don't know I have no expectations I don't know I hope someday I can go and um uh, with them you know <laughs> for a couple of days or forever I don't know I don't know I don't know what's going to happen but uh, I know that I have to be very clever and I have to be very Atento, or um, how would you say in English, and uh, to be attentive, pay attention, pay attention 
to the sky and to the trips I do. I drive my car. Yesterday I drove through the desert three hours and I was thinking, oh, maybe I should stop and put the camera. So now when I have this feeling I should stop and to put the camera, I will do it. I'm sure I'll, I will stop the car and I'll put the camera because that's why I'm I'm feeling something. And um, but um, no expectations, uh, Steve. Uh, I know I'm gonna meet people. I know this is gonna. It's just part of the of the of the stories I'm gonna tell my kids and my grandkids. And it's just life, you know. It's uh, I I feel it like this. I and I have this feeling, and uh, when I to told Juan, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, I have this big, big feeling that uh, we can find something very interesting underwater in the ocean, and the ocean hasn't been studied. Like uh, maybe five percent of the ocean has been studied, and mainly next to the coast. And now we don't know what's going on there. And uh, every dive, I have this n new, new expectation, you know, of, of finding something that is not, um, that hasn't been documented before. Because I can't say that this stuff is from outside of the earth. I don't know. I think. They've been in the earth always, but in different dimensions that we are not able to see and feel. That's it. It's just a lot of dimensions in the same spot. And at the same time, this spot is just nothing, you know? Earth and mm -hmm. us and each spot is just a spot in nothing and we're nothing. But in this huge and this tiny stuff, I I have to be, boom, I don't know, see what happens, you know, and and I really would like to know what what's this that I recorded, why why I saw it, why I saw it. So and this is kind of these conversations that we are having right now um, is is a little bit of to talk about it, you know, and to see what what. Why I saw it and what not other person. So I know that one of the things, and, and I can't get too deeply into it. Juan and I have discussed this, and we have a, a mutual friend, um, another mutual friend. Um, and I don't know how deeply I can go into this, but I can specifically uh -huh. say that this person recognized what it was, uh -huh. confirmed what it was. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you've spoken with, with Juan about that or not, but um, specifically said that they had had experience with this exact object, like not something like it, um, but something that was identical to this object. And this was many years ago. Um, this was not something that was recent. In fact, um, one of the things that had been posited, one of the things that had been spoken about was maybe this was a technology that somehow either the United States or another foreign government had, and it was over the rainforest. Well, there's a couple problems with that. The first one is, while it must be able to uh, either cloak itself, disappear, um, and appear at the at, at literally a fraction of a second, we don't have that. There's, there's just no way that we have that. Um, and the other thing that it would be would be that it would be huge, right? And it, and it it's over the canopy over the trees and that's just simply not occurring i i don't you you can't point me to anything that could technologically do that um for humanity it, it just it does not exist um and it was i i think an important aspect um to get that other person that we were speaking with um i'm trying to get them on record um i'm, I'm really trying um they are under a um a classified uh, non-disclosure agreement. Um, they, they, they off, uh, not to me personally, but to Juan, um, they spoke off record, um, that this orb that, that we caught or that you caught and that we've been talking about is the exact object, um, that I had reported about before, uh, with my contact, you caught on film 
Um, and then it was shown to this other person and this other person said, I know what that is. I know exactly what that is. Um, there are thoughts about time travel components. And I know that that's, that's out there. Um, there are discussions about interdimensionality, um, moving between dimensions. Um, and then there's just people that are talking about, um, a, a, a portal movement moving from point A to point B, but going pew, pew, very fast. So it's here and now it's, uh, you know, now it's across the country in like that, right? Portals. Um, and then there are other things that uh, were discussed between uh, Einstein Rosen bridges, which are wormholes, right? You take a piece of paper, you fold it in half, you go here to here, boom, you're right through. So distance isn't a problem. Um, so that's that. That's that part of the the discussion that is still ongoing, and and what Juan and I are trying to figure out. Um, so I'm trying to get you that information as much as I can. I I can I have a couple theories that I'm not ready to co completely put out, but I think this person definitely knows a lot lot more than they're they're able to speak about. Um, but yeah, so that's that's ongoing. Uh, that that technological component is ongoing. It's it's something that we've been working on, and I want to give Juan a lot of credit on that because he um, he certainly led the charge on that. Um, I had a I had a sneaking suspicion, um, but then when he you know when we talked about that, it was kind of a kind of an aha moment. Like ah okay, so it's like everything that I had reported on early, and then your picture. And then what I heard later on, it's like it's all tying together. Um, and there are others that are in this in this community, in this field, um, much, much more connected than I am, um, that are saying 2024 is going to be a very big year. And you're going to get a lot of answers as to what these things are. Um, you're going to get a lot more um, from people that have also experienced these things, um, not just yourself, but others. Um, first-hand witnesses that are coming forward, people that have had same experiences as you that are coming forward, um, and others uh -huh. that are, uh, you know, able to continue on and, and really uh, um, tell their stories and get that out. So it's a it's a really cool um, it's a really cool time, and I think you're going to be learning a lot more about it, um, especially with your experience very soon. Um, so that's a good thing. I lost your video, but I don't think it matters because I. Uh, believe I can still hear you, but the video um, on my end cut out, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay cut out. Sometimes this this application does that. But um, So, yeah, I mean, uh, do you have no. any final thoughts as we wrap it up? I think we're getting right into the hour. So um, I think it's been interesting. And, and, you know, I certainly I think we're going to keep in contact and I would like to um, make sure that I keep a line of communication out and open between us so that I can also kind of point you in the area. Um, of other people that have, uh, you know, experienced some of this as well. So how can we get into, 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 uh, how can we go into a straight communication? Um, you and I, um, oh, it's easy. I, I have all your contact information, so I can, I can get you into complete and direct just you and my conversation. That's not a problem. Um, we'll talk off air about that. I can, I, I'll just send you an email tonight and I'll give you all my information so that you're able to. Um, contact me anytime you want. It's, we'll 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 figure it out. I'm not worried about that. You know, contact me anytime you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will be good and for me it's right. yep. just yep i agree and i i want you to get in um, i want you to get in contact with some other people um, you know, as well that i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of introduce you to uh, with experiencers as well as um people that are a little bit higher up in this than i am um, I'd like to try and get you in contact with Tom DeLong. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can do that. Um, I, we do have mutual friends. I don't know him personally, but we do have mutual friends. So um, I will do my best to make that occur. Um, so, yeah, I mean, moving forward, um, I'll, I'll send you some info once we get offline here and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Um, 
But yeah, so again, anything further that you have for me this evening? No. Uh, next um, studies that you've been doing and, and analysis that you've been doing with Juan and with uh, other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. We have more coming. So there's just stay tuned. And, and if I can get this other person on record, um, it's going to be a big deal. Um, it'll be very big deal. Um, much like it, it I, I don't really, I can't, I, I I wish I could shout it out, but I can't. I made promises, and I and this person is entitled to their, um, you know, their privacy, and they're also entitled to, uh, you know, if it's a classified situation, they they're stuck. There's not much that they can say. We can talk behind the scenes, but I can't bring it out. It's not possible for me to do so. Um, but we'll yeah, work and on I it. I know we'll that see. Mark. Mark, uh, also, I would like to talk also with Mark and someday, but I know that now he's not able, he's uh, like uh, busy and some other stuff, important stuff, you know, but I'm looking forward yep. to know more. And uh, I, yes, I just want to to be used the, the picture in the in the conditions that we talked at the beginning, and that the, my yes. trades are on the when when we use the photo, and to please ask you to put my trades when you do your posts yes. in in X or any any media mm, that you do any any mm -hmm. post. I think that. Uh, sometime we need to, to take this from the X, from Instagram, from this. Mm, you know, we know we know that this um, um, social media to get to a right. certain amount of people. I think sometime we need to do this a little bit more mass. think that this Absolutely. has been demonstrated and that you and anybody who listens to this talk that we've had can tell and know that I'm not lying and I, I have yep. certain that I saw I, I was in that place in that moment and I and I did this picture and this is Something, you know, something important and I just want to keep touch with you and Juan and keep going to see what what goes what goes on yep. about this you know so that's Absolutely. just a matter of time and i hope that uh, in a few years on a, or in a few months it's not just one picture it's hundreds and thousands of people uh, seeing stuff you know yep. and i know that this is going to happen yep. but in this moment yep. um it's just uh, an important testimony it's just one more testimony, but it's an important testimony, and it's unique. So um, that's what yep. makes it um, important, and that's what makes me um, feel 
um, this emotion, I don't know, I, I don't know how to put it in words, but uh, I have this very nice feeling. Mm. Good. It's been awesome talking to you. I, uh, I appreciate your time. Um, 